Hello, I'm going to walk you through step by step how we can create an example of a rope model like we see in front of us here in Inventor. So I'm going to create a new part file and the key here is I have to build a 3D sketch which defines the shape of the rope. So I'm going to hit start 3D sketch and create a helical curve. I want to define it by uh, pitch and height in this case. So I'll say my diameter is going to be 30 millimeters. My height, let's say I want four pitches, that can be 120, uh, and my pitch is going to be, or sorry, excuse me, three pitches of 40 millimeters here. And uh, I need to define my end, so I can define my start point here, and then I just need to snap it to, in this case, horizontal here. And then I'm going to say, okay. And I've got a, helix here which is going to define the shape of my sweep. I'm now going to put a plane on the end of the helix uh, in order to draw the profile of the, the rope thread that I want to sweep along it. So I'm going to hit finish sketch up here and I'm going to create a new plane, click on the edge or on the end of the helix and the helix there and I've got a plane that's perpendicular to the end of the helix. So I can left click on that plane or I can just hit start 2D sketch up the top here and I'm now sketching on the plane uh, that's perpendicular to the end of the helix and I just want a circle on here so uh, I'll put put a circle on here I'm going to name this parameter I'm just going to call this thread thread size equals uh, let's say um, 17 or 18 millimeters um, and Apparently I need two dimensions, so I need to constrain this. So I need to uh, use a coincident constraint up here between there and there, except this point isn't projected in. So I'm going to have to project it into this sketch, project geometry, pick the point. There's the point there, and I can now use my coincident constraint between there and there. The sketch is now fully constrained, so what I can do is hit finish sketch and I can sweep this profile along the path so I'm going to use the sweep tool and define my path here and just say OK. Okay now the key is uh, if we were to put the, these, the pitch of this coil too close together we wouldn't be able to uh, to actually sweep it because we'd have self intersections. So what I need to do is to uh, create the other thread of this rope. Uh, and to do that, uh, it's not a mirror, it's actually I need to circular pattern um, around the axis. So I'm going to hit circular pattern. I'm going to pattern a solid. Let's pick this solid. It's already picked. It looks like let's pick the rotation axis, which can be this one here. I don't want six threads, I just want two threads in this case. Um, I'll choose to join it to the existing solid and I'll say OK. OK, so that's not looking too bad. Um, I then need to do some trimming um, back and front so, you know, easy enough for me to go in get my planes in. Uh, I might want to move that one in by a certain amount and this this one also in. Uh, if I offset that one here you know by a certain distance and then I can trim by these planes. I can use the split tool, trim solid, choose that and hit remove and apply and then do the same this side and apply. So now I've got a rope uh, shape here. If I want to fill in the center, you know, that's easy enough to do. Um, if I create a new sketch on here um, and stick a circle on there to uh, to sort of fill in the center, the center void here. And let's extrude that. And let's extrude it from to, from there to there. 
Okay, so we've got some we've got some gaps in here. I might want to increase my thread size, so uh, I can go and find the sketch that defines that. Let's just maybe increase that to 20 millimeters and finish the sketch. Let's see if this profile looks a bit better. So we've still got a couple of voids in there. Um, maybe if I increase it using my parameters to 20.5. Okay, so we've got a nice clean profile here. Let's turn off the uh, display of those work planes. Right click V on the work planes. We'll do that for us. And we've got a nice shape of a rope that we can actually, uh, we could pattern that along. Um, and we can, can probably use the bend tool if we want to create a bent rope. Uh, let me just show you uh, this finished example here. Um, you saw there I named the thread size parameter. Uh, in this example, I've actually named lots of the parameters, the length parameter, the pitch of the rope, um, the di overall diameter of the rope, um, and the number of threads. So we've got a slightly more parametric model here. So if I bring up, if I add all those parameters to an iLogic form, I can choose to set the sizes in here a little bit more um, intuitively. So if I type in length of 120, that will adjust. If I change the pitch size to uh, say 38 millimeters, I've actually got a fillet between the pitches here, so I can't make too great changes to that. Uh, I can increase or decrease the diameter or the thread size. Let me just uh, show you uh, with a slightly larger thread size. Okay, and then as I said, if we wanted to uh, have a bent bit of rope, then what we'd need to do is probably use the bend tool. Um, bend tool is very handy for bending virtually any kind of geometry in Inventor. If I go to uh, my 3D model tab, I'll show you where it is. Okay, so that's how that bend, the bend tools ena enable me to bend this shape. If I show you where that is, 3D model bend part and all you need to do for that is to define a sketch with a line in it which is your line that you're going to use for the bend line. If I go into this bend part uh, command when you're using the bend tool don't um, don't have the preview turned on if you've got complicated geometry like this because it will take ages to show you just like it is here in fact so turn the preview command off make your changes uh, you see in this case I've got a, a bend going both sides of the line, radius and angle, um, and then when you're done, uh, hit OK and, and, and you can check the results. And then all I've done here is I've just patterned that around four times with a circular pattern, just for fun, and then I've uh, created a rectangular, rectangular pattern of that. Um, you can see here the, the rope's not quite round so I would need to actually uh, adjust my bend to make it a bit more of a smooth round uh, shape. You can see actually I've got a slight offset here. Well in fact I'd need to uh, change the size so that the uh, the overall length is a multiple of the pitch. So if I change the pitch to 40 then we'll get four, uh, three, excuse me, pitches in the total length and we should get a nice uh, join up between the two uh, uh, the two sections here. Okay, that's a bit better. I'll um, I'll attach this part to the blog. I uh, hope you find this useful. Thanks a lot.